Welcome, everybody. Today is September 22nd, 2022, and we're, um, we're at the IC, this is the IC Topic Chats. We meet every Thursday at 11 a.m. or noon if you're on the East Coast. Uh, today, we're, we're being visited by Mary Frances Porter, and she's going to talk about post-pandemic marketing. Take it away. All right. Now, I've got my pictures of you guys muted, so speak up if you have a question. Um, I came about a year ago and talked to you guys about how I was restructuring my business and introduced you to the idea that I'm actually a reluctant entrepreneur. Um, I started my, my business on my own in 2013, basically because I wanted to stay in Charlottesville and there weren't any job opportunities for me um, here in the area. I needed to move to Richmond or DC in order to be able to do the kind of work I wanted. So um, I had been running my business between 2013 and 2020, really just word of mouth um, and giving presentations at the local Center for Nonprofit Excellence and, um, uh, work and just doing good work is my only marketing strategy. And um, this is basically what I did. I did traditional kinds of um, program evaluation and data collection with small and medium sized nonprofits. And at the pandemic, um, my friend Allison had just gotten her PhD. She and I had been um, collaborating and talking about going into business together for almost a decade. Um, and we went into business together and did that for about a year. And then Allison has a son that has very significant um, physical and uh, cognitive disabilities. And so she just got to the point where she could not do the business and um, her family anymore. And so we ended up very amicably um, splitting ways. And that left me kind of trying to figure out how to recoup my energy going forward um, without her. What we did together was um, we remade the logo, we got headshots, we reinvented the website, we hired a social media strategist for a ton of money um, to help us broaden our um, reach to people around the country, because I had only been working here regionally. Um, and what we then did is um, we didn't, the social media strategy wasn't a good fit for us. One, because you'll, I'll tell you in a minute, social media wasn't the way to go. And um, that individual seemed to like kind of hijack our voice. So it took us a while to kind of come back and settle into our brand. And we ended up creating a model for doing our work, um, that is what I'm, I'm doing now. This is the new website um, uh, and it's really about helping people tell, helping nonprofits tell the story about the impact that their work is doing in a non-scientific, but still um, really valid and reasonable way. Um, and this is the model that we created um, and I won't go through all of it, but you can actually download a description of the model where we take people through mapping out their strategy, their data collection, and their storytelling. So this is what I've settled on now that I do, now that it's just me again, and I've got this strategy and this um, new idea going for, forward. The first thing is that I focus on small and medium-sized nonprofits, which I identify as being between $500,000 and $3 million dollars. Um, annually. I'm doing everything 100% online. And I offer just two things. I offer an intensive eight-week academy. It goes through each of those six pieces of the model that I showed you up here. So we spend one week on each of these, and then there's a work week, one week on each of these, and there's a work week, and one week on each of those. I also do one-on-one -on -one custom impact story coaching. And I'm expecting to be able to take between five and 10 clients a year to do this. This is actually a two year experience where I walk people through actually putting all of the structures and processes and knowledge in place to implement the strategy at their organization. So we lay out all the frameworks, we go through and do a complete data inventory, we um, revamp as needed all of their data collection and their data collection processes. Um, they collect their data for a year with coaching periodically through that. And then once their data is collected, we go through how to do data analysis, how to do data visualization, how to start making internal dashboards, and how to start combining 
data visualization and narrative in order to be able to tell really powerful stories. And then I coached them for another, um, the balance of that year. And the idea is that I really just want organizations to be um, resourced and have the capacity for ongoing impact storytelling. I talk about how it really shouldn't be more difficult for the organization than monitoring and managing their budget and being able to tell stories about their budget. But impact stories, budgets are all sort of the same shape, right? We, and you can use QuickBooks and people are familiar with the idea of budgets and you can just sort of do them if you have someone who knows how to do them. But most nonprofits don't have access to someone who knows how to collect the data and manage the data. Um, but I want them to be able to do that. Um, and then what I've also done is I'm working with my um, website developer who got COVID and now has long COVID. So this has gotten delayed a little bit, is creating a network um, through the membership in my organization where the people who have worked with me are able to share questions and stories and experiences um, and be able to build um, collective knowledge around telling impact stories and data collection. Because since it does have to be customized, the more you, the more stories you hear, the more space you have to be able to understand and adapt what um, is needed for your organization. So these are the things I'm doing right now. I'm currently planning one of these for the spring and I've got one client doing the coaching right now um, and another two clients may be starting to do coaching. I'm starting now to recruit for people next year. So in my marketing over COVID, when I came to you guys before, I was deep into social media world. I spent lots of money and time and stress and made plans and con created content and posting calendars and tried to be humble, engaging, natural. Um, I hired someone to help me do all of the posting. We bought like some program that we could use to post things. And I learned four things. One is that I despise social media, which I knew before, but I really know now. Two, it was taking a lot of work and engagement to build an audience that I felt was broad enough to kind of sell to. Um, I learned that having a social media presence is important. I do need that. Um, but I also realized that I didn't want to spend all my time and money trying to beat the algorithms on social media to have people know who I am. So what I've decided to do with social media is only post when there's something really interesting to post. Like if I write a blog or I'm teaching a class or an article comes out or I can celebrate a client or something like that, I will definitely do that so that there's something there. And if people go to my social media accounts, they can see that there's a there there, but I'm not using it in any way, shape or form with the intention of marketing. What I have decided to focus on is spending lots of money and time, but less stress and more fun, actually speaking and training. So what I've learned is I'm a pretty good speaker. People tend to think I'm funny and engaging, which I find very hard to do on social media without being snarky and sarcastic. Um, people like coming up and talking to me after I give talks. I like talking to them after I give talks. And I can give away in those conversations little bits of consulting, um, which have a really powerful effect. And I've got some tools that I put on my website, like my strategic impact map guide, which is my version of a logic model, that while I'm selling them, I can give away um, at kind of no cost, because it's not like people that person was going to necessarily buy it anyway. And they feel like they've gotten a lot of value and they have a sense of who I am and they're much more invested in potentially buying from me. And so this is what I've done. I, this is really small. I should have put it on two slides, but I was feeling like I was going to squeeze it on one. Um, this is what I've done so far in kind of trying to move out of my Charlottesville bubble and into the world in the talking way. So the first thing I did was I joined my local affiliate and I spoke, I've spoken at the Eastern Evaluation Research Society conference, and I've been intentionally connecting with evaluators in lots of other ways. I joined the nonprofit hub and the nonprofit learning lab, um, which has given me some opportunities to talk and connect with people. And one of the things that really did is it actually connected me to an executive coach who is working through the nonprofit learning lab 
he and I have really connected. And I actually talked to his group of people that he's coaching and gave everyone free copies to my guide and signed a contract and have two strong leads. So I was like, well, that's the way to go. I'm investing in more of that. I actually, I'm in Virginia. I flew all the way to Texas to give a 40 minute talk. And the whole way there, I'm like, what am I doing? This is a complete waste of time. But we ended up, I ended up with a hundred people in the conference, um, 20 people got added to my mail-in list. Um, I've had one exploratory call so far. Um, and I gave three copies of my guide away and had interactions with those people afterwards. So while it was relatively expensive and felt kind of silly at the time I did it, I'm like, I think I would rather invest in that than a virtual assistant doing social media. That felt like more meaningful connection with 100 people than I ever got in the 100 or 500 people that she was able to connect with me to. So I'm also speaking online at the Legal Aid Society in October, and then I'm going to be going to Arkansas in December to speak in person at a nonprofit conference. And I've started to track my business and outreach connections as my business development strategy, as my marketing strategy. Um, and that is helping me um, really keep track of making sure and keep me accountable to myself for making sure that I'm making the kinds of connections um, and talking to people that I need to. And then you guys might have seen, but we they just, um, Sherry Smith actually just posted a, a woman who does business consulting and how to um, sell, like how to, how to increase your revenue. And so I joined that, which starts October 10th and it sounds fabulous. I'm very excited. So I'm gonna continue to write and talk and go to this business coaching group. I'm actually, as excited about the connections in that group as I am for what I'm gonna learn um, and continue to kind of branch out and try to um, do good work and get more referrals. And that's me. So that leaves not a lot of time for questions but I'm very happy to take them. And you can email me or go to my website and get 30 minutes with me um, on Zoom and I'm happy to talk to you more.